Back in the day when people tested cars to see whether they're good or not, quite a lot of time was spent talking about the engine, the oil a bit, but guess what? Things have really changed. And with the rise of electric cars like this one behind me, there are no huge differences when it comes to things like transmissions and the engine. And when manufacturers talked about things like user experience and how you use the car, they mean the tech and the gadgets in the car and how we actually use them. And that's where I come in. I'm Tommy, otherwise known as Gadgets Boy. And I'm into technology and how it can improve our lives. And do you wanna know what's impressing me right now? Car technology. The automotive industry have come a very long way in a relatively short period of time. And Tesla no longer has a stranglehold on all things fresh and digital. Do you want an example? Well, it just so happens I've got the Pulsar 2 here to play with. And I'm gonna show you everything that it's all about in terms of technology. So. Here's a Gadgets Boy Tech Rundown. Let's start with the big news. So for many years, car manufacturers have attempted to take on tech giants to come up with their own in-car operating system. And in fact, the ones that tried haven't been very good. Certainly not as good as the user interface that you get with your smartphone, but Polestar have figured out that if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. And with the Polestar 2 here, you get Google inside. Nice. And this is the main event. Taking center stage in this slick cocktail bar-esque interior is the frameless 11.5 inch portrait touchscreen slap bang in the middle of the dash, which controls most of the functions. So far, so good, but fancy screens are pretty much par for the course for a 50,000 pounds car these days. But what's also the big deal with having an Android operating system in the car? One word, it's usability. Polestar have brought in the best in biz. It's not the cheapest solution, but it's really good. So what can they actually do? On this screen, we have a pretty much minimalist display here that we can see here. It's very easy to use. You'd be familiar with this if you have an Android phone already, or even just to generally, in general, just a smartphone. So you've got driver performance that you can have a look at to see how your car's performing. And if we go back, you have some apps that you can put into this area. It goes up to three pages. So at the moment we have Google Maps. That's also there, again, integrated in the car already. You have your phone information system here. You have some more applications here and you've got a Google Assistant on that corner over there. You can move this around, for example, like you would on your smartphone. So if I wanted to move Spotify app, uh, app icon over there, I can move that like so. You've also got a Google Play Store, which means you can download some applications and these apps are automotive certified. So I've also linked my Google account to this, which means when I go into Google Assistant, I can check things like my calendar and also control pretty much a lot of things in this car using Google Assistant. Hey Google, play Drake on Spotify. Sure, here's a Spotify playlist called This Is Drake. One big advantage of having Google Android operating system built into this also is the fact that it links up with my Google ecosystem. So for example, at home, I've got Google Home for my lamp. Hey Google, turn bedroom lamp on. Sorry, it looks like two lights aren't available right now. Uh, unfortunately, maybe my lights aren't on at home, but if they were on, it means I could do that from here, for example. And that's built into the system from the get-go. But that's not even the whole story. Developers can develop applications for this system here as well. And that's gonna be monitored using a multi-layered security system. So that way, not just anyone can pop anything on there that may tamper with your car. You also got a digital key, which means you can share the car with someone else in the family, all of your friends when you're not there. Polestar even considering in the future that you might be able to get one of these via a subscription service rather than the traditional ownership model. Polestar has bitten the expensive bullet. There's no point trying to build a system like this from ground up. So it's a good move to use something that we're all already familiar with and already use. If there's any cons to this is that there, there aren't that many applications available right now to this. So for example, I would love to have Netflix available on here. Although we wouldn't be watching that whilst driving, it could be useful when you're parked up charging your car just to watch something while you wait. Then there's a 12.3 inch configurable display. You can get normal dials like your speedometer when driving, and you can also choose from three visual styles. So you have calm, car centric, and navigation. I also know what you guys are thinking. You're probably thinking, what about internet connectivity? With this, you get three years of uh, data subscription. So with that, you'll be able to use internet in the car with Google services. And there's also a Wi-Fi function as well. So if you're gonna be working from your car, for example, whilst you're charging it, you'll be able to get your laptop out and connect to the car and use data that way. I've just realized that I've been so excited and consumed by the technology in the Polestar 2 that I haven't really told you much about the car. But guess what? 
I have a cool assistant here that can tell me all about it. Hey Google, how much is the Polestar 2? The Polestar 2 is listed by the manufacturer at a starting price of £49,900. Hey Google, how fast is the Polestar 2? The top speed of Polestar 2 is 127.4 miles per hour. Decent. Hey Google, tell me all about the Polestar 2. Based on the same underpinnings as the brilliant Volvo XC40, the Polestar 2 is a 402 bhp executive car with a claimed 292 mile range that same squarely at the sparsely populated, cheaper end of the premium electric market, the area between the Kia e Nero and the Tesla Model S, for example. One other cool feature that you've got here is that camera as well. So 360 camera, especially when reversing as well. So you'll be able to see all around the car. So you can see the camera here ready to go. So you can see all around you, you can press that one to then focus on just that side, come back out, press upwards. You can see what's in front. If you go back out, see what's behind. So very, again, very easy to use, straightforward. From a tech perspective, this is all pretty impressive. It's certainly heading in the right direction and the functionality is leagues ahead of other stuff currently on the market. The user experience doesn't stop there either. You've also got wireless charging, so like so if you have a smartphone that's compatible, you can just place it in that tray there and wireless charging is active. You can also turn that off completely if you don't want that to accidentally function at all. You've also got two USB-C ports on the front here and you've also got two at the back so you can easily charge your phone or other devices in the car. And finally, you have a really good sound system from Harman Kardon, which you can also customize in terms of equalizer so you can change treble, the bass, the subwoofer, and even customize it to your own taste if you know what you're doing. If you want to find out more about the Polestar 2 and how we measure up against the competitors, we have videos for you just here to check that out. So make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And also head over to electrifying.com for the lowdown on the latest electric cars.